The last time I made my quicker and easier pig saver ham, I asked you for suggestions on how to improve it, and guess what? You made this recipe simpler, and you made it better. Er. So while I make it, I'll tell you what ideas of yours I tested out and what I ended up using. This is one of the best things I've ever made, so let's go get it. Grab your food processor and add 3 fourths cup or 180 mils of water, 5 ounces or 140 grams of tofu. I've reduced the amount of tofu based on your suggestions. 2 tablespoons of liquid smoke and add 1 eighth teaspoon or 10 drops of red food dye. This is the kind I used. Look at that concentration. Run it for 30 seconds to liquefy the tofu and let's add Add in our seasoning. So pop in four teaspoons onion powder, two teaspoons garlic powder, three tablespoons sugar. Brown sugar would work great here too, I just didn't have it. Two teaspoons salt, one teaspoon MSG, a fourth cup of mushroom powder, and two tablespoons of chickpea flour. Speaking of which, the chickpea flour was a change I made from your suggestions, and it made a huge impact on the final product. The original recipe had all-purpose flour in it, which ended up weakening the gluten formation, causing it to not be as firm. You can even see it in the difference in these test hams. The one with the AP doesn't have those strands of well-formed gluten that we need. Okay, so now we have our seasonings in the processor. Let's run this for another couple seconds to get that all diffused. And then we'll add two cups or 250 grams of vital wheat gluten. Squeegee the sides if you like and run it on low for three minutes total to develop the dough. Seriously, three full minutes. Don't stop it early, set a timer. At the one minute mark, my 11 cup food processor started to really struggle. So I took out about half of the dough and ran each batch for the remaining two minutes. So while this is going, I'm gonna tell you that this was another great suggestion from the community. Using a food processor develops the gluten way better than kneading by hand, but don't sweat it if you don't have a food processor. You can still knead by hand, just do it for five minutes or so. Now gather the bits from the bottom and squeeze the dough back together. It will look a bit pebbly, but don't worry about that. This is forming back together as I hold it in my hands. You should be able to stretch it gently without it falling apart. I tested this with too much hydration and it ended up turning into goo instead of a dough. So if you see this, you likely put too much water in. My doughs ended up separated since I did two batches and we want that for the next step. So if you have one big dough, do your best to cut it in half. Now starting out with the most rested dough, begin stretching Stretching it out from the center and lengthening it out until it is a rough oval. No need to be perfect here. See those beautiful strands forming? That is exactly what we're looking for. If there are parts of the dough that haven't come back together like this, just give them an old hard pinch and that should do the trick. Now when one of them tightens up, give it a rest while you stretch the second dough out. Once you have two ovals about seven to eight-ish inches long, dial up three teaspoons of coconut oil, making little fatty pockets in one of them. This will add extra flavor. I'm using refined coconut oil. Make sure it's refined. And nope, it doesn't smell or taste at all like coconut. You can also use vegan butter if you like, but I found that the coconut oil is easier to work with and it is solid at room temp. We're adding the fat this way as it is difficult to add fat directly in the dough as it hinders gluten development, so we're sandwiching it together here instead. Take the other side and stretch it to cover the loaf with the fat. Once covered, turn it over and keep pinching the loaves together at the seams. If the little fat squishes out, it's all good. Set that aside and keep pressing and stretching and combining. It might be a bit fiddly, but what we want to try to strive for is a presentation side by wrapping one one over the other. If it just won't comply, let it rest for a bit, which I did here actually for 15 minutes. This relaxed the gluten and gave it time to stick back together. Once it looks like this, go ahead and grab a large sheet of aluminum foil and place your roast in the bottom center. Roll it up tightly and then find the ends with your fingers, which is right here. And then pinch the foil right before the roast, twisting from the ends. And then do the same for the other side. Put that in a 300F 175C oven on the middle rack for one and a half hours. For style points, you can use an oven safe cooling rack. This is not needed but at least place it on a baking sheet. Now we will make our stock for the second cook. I tell you to make your own veggie stock from scratch, but since the goal here is a quicker recipe, we're gonna use a concentrate. Use what you like, I like this brand, not an ad. Now get the stock hot on a burner while the roast bakes. At the end of the bake, check the internal temp. Mine was roughly 210F 98C. Carefully unwrap, as you can see the roast is sealed back together, which looks great, then set sail to the roast in the boiling stock. A 
immediately turning off the burner. I wanted a little bit more water here, so I added some boiling water from my electric kettle, just enough so it'll float. Pop on your oven safe lid, leaving it cracked just a bit, and then put it into the 350F 175C oven for another hour and a half. So a Dutch oven is great for this because it has super high walls and it's oven safe. Just make sure yours doesn't have any plastic or wood anywhere on it. You can also use a wider pan with shorter walls like this if you like. Just please, please be careful not to slosh scalding hot water on yourself. If you aren't comfortable with this or don't have the right equipment, you can also simmer on the same burner for the same amount of time. Once the hour and a half is up, take it out of the oven and let it cool to room temp in the stock and let it rest overnight. Tomorrow we'll finish the roast. Hey, it's tomorrow. The final prep is often the most overlooked part. So let's nail this. The glaze from my last recipe was way too wet. So let's try out a new one. To a bowl, add one fourth cup of sugar, a teaspoon of molasses, a squirt of agave, a teaspoon of mustard, a teaspoon of any vinegar, a small dash of cayenne, a few cracks of freshly ground black pepper, and a dash of Worcestershire sauce. Whisk it together and if it looks soupy like this, add another one fourth cup of sugar or so. When it is thick, like this, like a paste, set it aside. Back to our roast, pour out your cooking stock, saving maybe some for a soup later, and leaving at least a cup at the bottom. Pop in a steaming insert, this one came with my Instant Pot, and then add some whole cloves to the water. Place your roast on top, and oop, I almost forgot we need to score this. So cut about half inch deep lines like so, one way, and then do the same on the opposite side. I think this is called a crosshatch? Take your glaze and liberally brush it on, saving about half of it for later. Covering the top and the sides, and then place that in a 350F 175C oven for 20 minutes. Every 20 minutes, check your ham and keep reapplying the glaze. If your oven was preheated when you started, it should only take about two times, but may require a third, and I wouldn't do this more than three times. And if you have a culinary torch, use it to make the top charred and brown to your liking. And then go ahead and serve this up. This would go great with some gravy, some mashed potatoes. It would just go great on a salad sandwich, literally anything. So I may make upgrading recipes a series on this channel. So that's something that you'd like, let me know. And also if you have suggestions for this recipe to make it even better, let me know that too in the comments. If you haven't seen my other ham videos, the one that just popped up on your screen might be of interest to you. And until next time you all, be nice to each other and keep cooking.